The Voyager mission started by chance over 40 years ago, when Michael Minovich, a mathematics PhD student, decided to tackle celestial mechanics' holy grail. It was known as the three-body problem. As it looked at the sun, a planet, and a third object traveling in space, and how gravity from the two objects affected the trajectory of the third. Minovich was eager to take advantage of IBM's latest computer, the 7090. This computer was a second generation transistorized version of the IBM 709, a vacuum tube mainframe which had a processing speed of around 100 kiloflops per second, unthinkably slow by today's standards. The laws of physics and the conservation of momentum demand that the probe approaching the gravitational influence of the planet and accelerating will then decelerate upon leaving that gravitational field with a net speed increase of zero. However, the probe's speed and direction will change in reference to the Sun. His solution has become known as gravity assist or slingshot. While undertaking an internship at NASA's JPL, he convinced them to test his model using their data. The results confirmed his predictions that if it flew close enough to a planet, a spacecraft could utilize that planet's motion to accelerate itself away from the Sun. When Caltech graduate Gary Flandreau was tasked to see if gravity assist could aid deep space missions to the outer planets, he discovered there was to be an alliance of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, an event that occurred only once every 176 years, an opportunity not to be missed. So it was decided to launch a mission in 1977. Two spacecraft would be launched which would slingshot past all four of them, a grand tour of the solar system's outer planets in a 12-year time frame. This was to become known as the Voyager missions, and the rest is history. Ultimately, we're able to put together a picture of where we are in the galaxy and how that environment then influences our environment right here at home. Um, in particular, the radiation environment, which has implications for all sorts of things, including human exploration of space. Today, those two spacecraft have continued on beyond the influence of our sun into interstellar space, the farthest traveled by a man-made object. This field of influence formed the basis for all future missions, allowing man to set his sights on getting into deep space economically. The Rosetta mission had different challenges, to catch up with and orbit a comet, 67P churyumov gerasimenko It had a large elliptical orbit around the Sun, stretching from the orbit of Jupiter to within the orbit of Mars. Launched in 2004, a year later the probe passed by Earth for the first gravity assist that flung it towards the orbit of Mars. Two years later, Rosetta grazed Mars, building up momentum, then swung by Earth for a second time, launching it deeper into space. The following year, Rosetta passed by asteroid Steins, before swinging back for a third gravity assist from Earth. And in 2010, Rosetta passed by asteroid Lutetia. Going into hibernation, Rosetta continued its parabolic trajectory towards its final destination. Four years later, Rosetta emerged from its cold sleep as it crossed paths with the comet, a circuitous flight indeed. The spacecraft then embarked on a series of maneuvers that took it on two successive triangular paths. Its trajectory was fine-tuned with thruster burns until it closed in to within about 30 kilometers of the comet, where the spacecraft entered actual orbit around it. Rosetta remained with the comet, delivering it cargo, then conducting science observations as it swung about the sun, then concluded with a gentle impact on the comet's surface in 2015. 
we're going to refine our ideas of, of what the comet is, where the comet came from, and encapsulate that within our ideas of, of how the solar system formed. And the complexity of the data set that we have also allows us to be more complex in our ideas and our theories. And that is the beauty of Rosetta. And we're starting to see that happening now, that we're really able to hone down our ideas of how the comet formed, how that fits in the evolution of the solar system. And that's going to continue. The Ulysses spacecraft had to leave the ecliptic plane of the solar system to study the polar regions of the sun. Accordingly, it needed to change its orbital inclination. This required a large change in heliocentric velocity, so a gravity assist maneuver around Jupiter was chosen. The giant planet's gravity bent the spacecraft's flight path southward, putting it into an orbit over and under the sun's north and south poles. The ion-powered Dawn spacecraft took maneuvering a step further. Dawn's the only spacecraft ever in more than 58 years of space exploration to orbit two extraterrestrial destinations, the last uncharted worlds in the inner solar system. And it not only allows us to get to these distant bodies, but once we're in orbit, we can maneuver extensively in order to get the best possible science that we can from the mission. 